All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Dan Meyer. I'm an editor in chief here at RCR Wireless News. And uh, today we are joined by Larry Davis, who's the uh, national sales manager at Enritsu. Talk a bit about what the company is doing in the 5G space. So, hey, uh, Larry, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Dan. We appreciate that. I appreciate the opportunity. Very good. Well, maybe start off with, obviously, I think uh, anybody in the mobile space has uh, heard the term 5G and uh, uh, maybe heard it maybe too many times at this point. But uh, I guess from your point of view and Enritsu's point of view, what is this whole thing about 5G? What's kind of the company's view on what 5G is and what 5G uh, is going to be? Yeah, Dan, you know, that's a big question because I think <laughs> 5G is a lot of things to a lot of different people. Yeah. Um, it, there are some big promises, as we've talked about before. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the engineers will look at 5G and tell you that it's all about broadband, uh, you know, uh, big bandwidth, throughputs, low latencies, and uh, high capacity. Um, there are folks, uh, you know, uh, in, in outside of our industry, outside of technology and, and test and measurement, that look at 5G as being an enabler to address uh, address uh, applications and needs that, uh, you know, with, uh, for example, in the medical space, you know, to be able to provide emergency care uh, remote, uh, you know, with reliability and the bandwidth needed to do so. Uh, uh, and uh, so it, it means a little bit of something uh, different to everyone. Um, for Enritsu, uh, we're an enabler. You know, we sell uh, test and measurement equipment. We sell tools to engineers to help them design, uh, you know, from the chipset level all the way uh, through to the UE, uh, the actual CPE or the equipment, network equipment. And then uh, we also have a, uh, an enabling role in, uh, with operators. And so our challenge, what 5G means to us, is we have to take uh, the things that are very unique, uh, uh, unique challenges with 5G, and we have to help our customers address these very unique uh, challenges. Um, and Ritsu has been in the mobile space, Dan, as you probably know, for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a deep uh, heritage, a deep uh, you know, legacy uh, in the mobile test and measurement space, as well as uh, millimeter wave. Mm -hmm. So we're in a unique position uh, to be able to take the data communications test products and tools that we have, our millimeter wave uh, expertise and our wireless expertise and bring those together to help our customers uh, address some of the really tough issues because frankly, all of these are going to be required to be able to address those uh, you know, throughput, latency, and all the technical issues and to hopefully eventually be able to provide to uh, uh, to the end users, the, uh, you know, the, the example I gave earlier, the medical uh, folks, uh, the types of to, uh, type of service uh, that they need in order to, uh, uh, to deliver on, on their promises or their, uh, their hopes for 5G. Yeah, that makes sense. And again, it does seem like historically a lot of these uh, evolutions of, of technology, test has always been a big part of those. But like you're saying, it seems like with 5G, it's almost become even more important because of what's expected of 5G now. I mean, again, 5G, you know, whether looking at, you know, how IoT plays in with it and, and the various uh, broadband technologies, I mean, it seems like 5G is going to be doing so many things that you really have to get it right, you know, almost from the get-go. And it seems like test has become uh, such a more critical part of the whole process. I'm guessing for you guys right now, as kind of the market is really trying to ramp up towards 5G, the carriers are testing things out, that the test part of it has got to be a pretty important part. I'm sure you're seeing a lot of, a lot of requests, a lot of interaction with the operators and with vendors and trying to make sure that what they're doing now is really uh, going down the right road in terms of kind of what the 5G plans would be going, going forward. Yeah, we, we see the challenges sort of in two areas. We see uh, a lot of the challenges are technical, and that's what gets most of the press releases these days, yeah. right? Uh, you, in the trials, you'll hear uh, the technology really uh, highlighted. Um, very soon, in fact, we're starting to see it now. Uh, the second challenge uh, is one that we've talked about before. It's one of economics. Yeah. It's one of business cases. Uh, we're right now at the point where we see a lot of great technology being, try being tried and being displayed. And, and uh, it looks like uh, that technically a lot of what 5G uh, had promised can, can be rolled out. Now the big question is, can it be rolled out economically? And as a test vendor, we play a, we play a role in that. We've got to take these big racks and stacks of, uh, you know, uh, half a million dollar, million dollar uh, test systems. And we've got to now take that. We have to consolidate that into something that uh, the folks out in the field, the operators can use, for example, to, to roll out these services in a cost effective way. We've got to take uh, all of these desperate uh, uh, technology test 
uh, platforms that we've developed over the years. And we've got to bring them all into one because 5G is not, all, is not just about millimeter wave radios. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about, uh, it really is about bringing together a lot of technologies and, uh, and bringing them together and, and so that they work uh, seamlessly together. So, for example, you know, the work that we've done on the 4G mm -hmm. uh, in the, with the uh, 3GPP, we, that is going to serve as a, as a critical core uh, to moving forward in 5G because what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, aggregating the millimeter wave bands together with our 4G, you know, with 4G. Mm -hmm. uh, 5G has a certain element of even uh, incorporating and aggregating non-licensed bands, so wireless LAN now comes into play. And then to make it all work, we've also got to, uh, to provide enabling tools to help the, the wireline side. Uh, you know, the, the uh, introduction in NFV and SDN in order to uh, establish a much more efficient uh, and, and capable uh, uh, wireline network. That's, uh, as they make that transition, they've got to validate all of the quality of service and so service level agreements that are necessary. So we also play a role there. So all of this comes together. It makes it very difficult, uh, but it is, it is something that we see a path. And I think that over the next few years, uh, that'll be, that's, that's what we'll be wrapped up in, is really bringing a lot of the technologies we've been working on over the last you know, decade uh, or more and bringing them all together to help our customers uh, you know, tackle and address some of these really tough issues. Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's so much happening in terms of, you know, what's going to be brought into 5G that I'm guessing for a company like yourselves, who is kind of at the center, center of a lot of this, because again, like you said, you have to be able to make sure this all interoperates with each other. Uh, and then the financial aspect, obviously, is always a big challenge as well. Uh, I'm yeah. guessing for you guys, uh, a lot of work ahead. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of, uh, uh, you know, long weeks and uh, long nights at work trying to make sure everything's working there. I guess what's maybe a big challenge for you guys moving forward in terms of staying on top of this, uh, of this market? It does seem like, again, almost every week a new a new use case is brought up, brought up or a new uh, spectrum band is thrown out there as well. I'm guessing for you guys, a lot of, a lot of challenges to make sure you stay on top of what's happening out there. Yeah, a lot of new technology being introduced, a lot of new problems and a lot of new challenges almost every day, almost every month you know, or week we go through and, and we look at, uh, you know, okay, how can we help our customers with uh, OTA measurements? Yeah. Uh, the ability to, uh, you know, to interact with a UE, you know, in the old days, you could do an easy, you know, or in the old days, in <laughs> today's 4G world, uh, we've got uh, the luxury of conducted measurements, you know, if you want to, uh, to test a device, you hook up a cable uh, to it, and, and you have that access. Uh, with, uh, with 5G devices, that, uh, that is, uh, that's a luxury we won't have. Uh, over, over the air measurements, uh, the ability to uh, to interface with the UE and exercise the UE without actually being able to connect up mm -hmm. is a big challenge. And uh, it's one that, uh, for example, it's just one of the examples of the tough issues that, that we're working on. Um, we also have uh, the big challenge of, of taking, like I said, um, our, our uh, millimeter wave, uh, you know, type of capabilities that have been a, a developed over the years, mostly for higher end uh, military, aerospace, defense, you know, microwave backhaul, commercial applications. And we've got to take that and we've got to, uh, just as the, as our customers have to, uh, have to develop lower cost solutions based on this technology, we've got to do the same thing. We've got to follow that same evolutionary path uh, for test equipment. Yeah. And so, for example, uh, I figured since we had a video, Dan, you wouldn't mind if I did a real quick show and tell. Yes, definitely. Okay. Please do. If you've been to any of the trials, you've probably seen uh, most of the, uh, the analysis equipment. It's rolled around on racks, uh, similar to the way the tested uh, base stations were tested back, uh, back in the 90s, you know, um, when Enritsu introduced the product called the SiteMaster. It, uh, it was a, a very big, uh, disruptive uh, introduction to the market. Uh, it, it enabled uh, the cost-effective uh, maintenance and, uh, and rollout of, of what we appreciate today in 3 and 4G. Our goal is to, be, is to provide that same type of disruptive technology going into 5G. And uh, just this, uh, this last week, we introduced a, a, a neat little product. That just, it's, it's an example of uh, the type of technology that Enritsu is, uh, is introducing. This is called the Power Master. Uh, this is a, uh, a frequency selective uh, power meter. So in effect, it's, uh, it's sort of a poor man spectrum analyzer. Uh, this product, this little guy that's not much bigger than a, a cell phone, uh, is, 
is, will take you for, uh, up to 70 gigahertz. Wow. So you can evaluate multiple channels uh, of uh, uh, multiple channels over the air. It's got a dynamic range of about 100 dB, so it's similar dynamic range to a spectrum analyzer, uh, but it's, uh, it's low cost and it utilizes a nonlinear transmission line technology that Enritsu has been using for some time in our high-end uh, uh, vector signal analyzers, our, our shock line and our, uh, and our other higher end uh, analyzers uh, utilize the technology, uh, the vector star, sorry, I, I blanked on the, on the model number. But the vector star and the shock line use this technology and now we've uh, taken this and, and incorporated it into a nice little uh, handheld tool. Uh, now this is, uh, this is just an example of the type of evolutionary path that we're gonna have to take and that we're investing in to enable our customers, the operators in this case, uh, to more cost effectively uh, manage and uh, maintain their networks. That's pretty impressive. Uh, the size uh, is just amazing. I remember the SightMaster when that first came out, you know, so long ago. The size of it at that time seemed pretty amazing, but now when you look at the technology and what you're able to cram into such a small little package, it's impressive now what's, uh, what's happened out there for you guys. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So now we're taking the SightMaster, it evolved, and we, we added spectrum analysis and, and SIP retesting and, and that, so all of that functionality through uh, up through 4G, and now we'll be, you know, our goal is to continue that, uh, you know, consolidation and miniaturization and utilization of the technology we've developed in the labs uh, to continue to address these applications. We're doing the similar things on the wireline side with our network master platform that, uh, that has uh, built in uh, timing references, rubidium references, uh, specifically aimed at helping our 4G and 5G customers to roll out next generation uh, base stations that don't have necessarily access to a GPS timing. Uh, this is based on a, a, a PTP uh, a packet uh, timing protocol uh, type of, uh, of, of uh, architectures. Mm -hmm. So well, I tell you what, we could just go on and on about all of the things we're trying to pack into, uh, into our testers, not only our uh, field testers that I just showed you, but also our R&D in our, our vector star, our shock line platforms, uh, uh, as, as well as our uh, uh, signaling testers uh, that, uh, that we currently use today in, uh, for 4G. Yeah, that's impressive. And again, the work you guys have done in the past in terms of millimeter, millimeter wave spectrum testing has been a big part of it. I know, again, all the operators are looking to test in those higher bands, and that's tricky for them because they're not used to doing that in a commercial environment. And obviously, you guys have a lot of experience with that. So uh, any sort of help they can get, I know, in terms of testing that and make sure those things can actually work in a commercial environment. Uh, as a big help to those guys. I know that, that's, that's a big part of that we're working on today. So that's, that's, that's Yeah, that's what we're trying. We're hoping. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Larry, definitely appreciate the insight. Obviously, you guys have a lot going on there in terms of help, helping out the evolution of 5G. And again, operators are moving aggressively. The, the market's moving uh, that way. And you guys seem like you have a, a lot in place to help out the progress. But uh, we definitely appreciate the good insight on the topic today. Thanks so much. And uh, hopefully we'll touch base again soon. Yeah, thank you very much, Dan. I appreciate the opportunity. All right, thanks.